Ocean City, Maryland is the hottest golf destination on the East Coast, and it's just a short drive away. With 17 championship golf courses designed by legends of the game, greats like Jack Nicholas, Robert Trent Jones, Arthur Hills, and Pete Dye have changed the coastal landscape here. When you pair coastal golf with exciting nightlife, excellent dining, 10 miles of white sandy beach, and a world-famous boardwalk, it's no wonder why great golf is just the beginning in Ocean City, Maryland. Plan and book your next golf getaway today by visiting OceanCityGolf.com or by calling 800 4 OC Golf. You know, I, I mentioned uh, Old Thomas as an addition to the team in the offseason. A huge pick up there. Now, some people might say, okay, coming off an injury at his age, maybe that was a risky signing. And that's legitimate. That, that's fine. But at the same time, when healthy, even at 80%, and with, and with all due respect to Eric Weddle, great teammate, you know, good locker room guy, good community guy, and, you know, puts his all in there. But he's not a cover safety. Bottom line, he is not a cover safety. And at times against the Steelers in years past, he and Tony Jefferson looked embarrassing out there trying to cover uh, Antonio Brown and Le'Veon Bell. That's just a part of the facts, uh, period. But that all said, Earl Thomas brings a coverage back to the center field that we haven't had before. You want to have safeties that are complementary. And Eric Weddle, maybe he used to be able to cover more ground than he does now. And he was a great Raven, a great teammate. But I think he and Tony Jefferson together are nowhere near as complimentary as Earl Thomas and Tony. Oh, absolutely. And I would say that, again, and we keep qualifying the Miami Dolphin game, but I think that Tony Jefferson's game yesterday was as good as I've seen him have as a great. Yeah, I mean, he, he was break up all, 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 all over the place, particularly yeah. up in the box, where you want him to be because that's his strength. And then on the flip side, Earl Thomas, there was one play, I think it was maybe a, a post corner to one of their receivers, and uh, Anthony Averett has coverage on him, on the receiver. It may have been the kid from Louisville, the one who cut through, Devontae Parker. Okay. Yep. And here comes, I know the player. Here comes Earl Thomas out of nowhere, center field, and converges on the play. He gets there in time to push him out of bounds, and it's an incomplete pass. Right. Because he did catch the ball. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Now, yeah. Just initially, yeah. Now, again, no knock on Eric Weddle, but you can't expect Eric Weddle to make those kind of plays. Now, Earl Thomas changes the way the Ravens and Don Wayne Martindale can make calls back then. Mm -hmm. Because he, he can trust that he's going to cover a lot of ground. And maybe and even the corners can trust their, their coverages a little bit better because they know that a guy like Earl Thomas is back there flying around helping them out with back end. And you mentioned Jefferson. Jefferson had a play, I believe, that Humphreys was uh, in the end zone uh, covering receiver. I don't remember which receiver it was, but Jefferson comes over and helps to swipe the ball out. Also, Brandon Carr had a play where he gave up a catch, but he swiped it at the end. That's the Ravens defense that I know, that even if somebody makes a play, you're then making a play yourself after that, whether it's swiping the ball out or just making a really hard tackle or whatever it is. You know, but, but Jefferson, yeah, he was uh, he was out there playing probably more in a comfort zone uh, than he has been over the last couple of years because he had two identical safeties. I agree 100%. Speaking of hard tackles, Patrick Owasso. I'm telling you, this this guy's going to make people forget about C.J. Lewis. He's a playmaker. I've already forgotten him. He's a playmaker. He's the guy that if, if you find that there's a, a, a ball on the ground, he probably knocked it out. He comes up with sacks. He comes up with tip balls. He, he's just he just is Johnny on the spot. And I, I think, here's a prediction for you, Frank. All right. I think that Peanut will be a better undrafted free agent linebacker than Bart Scott is. Wow. That's a different game. So his pass coverage skills are coming more into play than what Bart had to do when he played. Right. But that's, yeah, and then Bart obviously went and got himself paid with the Jets and went to two straight AFC champions. Right off the bat. So, yeah. But Peanut's doing the job. Man. Well, how about Judon? He blew up a blush in the backfield. Yeah, Steve's shaking his head over there. He blew up a blush in the backfield on that screenplay as well. I mean, the defense was fast and ferocious yesterday. I think we can all agree. They, I mean, they were lights out. They were hitting. And that's something the Ravens are always been been known for is a physical play defensively, and they they did that. In fact, I'd like to say, Tony, it's a level of physical play that, while they had it more so yesterday than I've seen in the last couple of years, because again, you're starting to get younger, and you've got that junior, you know, at uh, on that play. Now, the question everybody has. You talked about the linebackers, you know, on a loss or peanut, whatever you want to call them. You know, Kenny Young in that spot as well. Chris Board, okay, undrafted, uh, another undrafted guy. So you got, I believe, two undrafted guys on this uh, on this roster, um, maybe three. 
but you've got the linebacker spots there. But then on the outside, can you get a pass rush? Matthew Judon returns, but an old friend Purnell McPhee is back, and you still have the two outside linebackers that you drafted a few years back that still have not come to fruition yet. They're, they're, they're getting better. You saw Tim Williams getting coming off the edge a few times yesterday. I think Bowser had a, a QB hit or two. I think they're getting better. I think that I'm just kind of surprised, Mike, that they're using McPhee more on the edge than they were, or than they are in the, in the interior rush. Because that was he was going to be that joker kind of player, you know, like Darius Smith was last year, the guy that could ru rush the middle. And I think that they need a little bit of that because I think these guys are getting home from the outside, but quarterbacks can climb the pocket, and if you can climb the pocket, you get away from that pressure on the outside. And if you can't get home on the inside, then the quarterbacks are going to have some time to throw. But right now, they're going to manufacture a pass rush like they did against the Dolphins, and I think I think they'll continue to do that. Well, if the secondary holds up, you can get away with blitzing Absolutely. and getting sacks that way if you're not getting it with your base defense. It's time to go. Toyota, with the best resale value of any brand, again for the third year in a row. Because when it comes to holding value, nobody does it better than Toyota. In fact, Toyota has three of the top 10 ranked by KBB.com for 2019, including Tacoma at number one. So whether you're searching for America's favorite car, SUV, or adventure-ready truck, this is where you want to shop. Go reliable, go Toyota, and let's go places. Now, Tony, we were talking about the defense. The, the one negative coming out of yesterday, uh, quarterback Jimmy Smith is going to be out uh, for several weeks uh, with a, uh, I believe, a, a grade two, grade two MCL. MCL. Okay, I just want to make sure a grade two MCL sprain. They have depth in the secondary, but they did lose Tavon Young. Unfortunately, during the preseason, you've got Maurice Cavity on the practice squad. Uh, Averett, a guy that you drafted out of Alabama after uh, you drafted uh, your other top-line quarter there in uh, Humphreys. So for those that might be questioning that, well, it's coming to those guys. What a great play. play you made yesterday. Yeah. And, and he did. And, he, and he's the one that came in. Now, Carr saw some time, too. And that's the other guy. Brandon Carr, a model of consistency. I think he's missed a start in over 100-some games. So they've got some depth there. But you don't want to have to push it too much. Yeah, Brandon Carr, I tell you, he's just a guy that I don't think he's missed a start in like nine seasons or something like that. Yeah. That's like I said, some 100 games or whatever. And that position, as we've seen, like, lends itself to injury because of what they have to put themselves through. You know, whether it's tackling, whether it's keeping up with wide receivers, they're just asked to do a lot. And I think, you know, whether it's groin injuries or ankle injuries, you just see it happen a lot of times with corners. And unfortunately, like you said, Jimmy's going to miss a few weeks. Tavon Young, there's some talk about maybe return from IR. That's Tavon talking more than is the Ravens. That's what the Ravens want to make sure that he's safe going forward because they, they gave him a four-year deal. So, but, but it, it speaks to the argument, like that you never have enough depth in the secondary. And fortunately, the Ravens, they have that depth. And, and maybe this is a learning curve average. You know, he's, he's played pretty well. But I'm pretty sure also that the Cardinals will be targeting him come Sunday. Oh, I'm sure. And, and why would you? Why would you? Right. Absolutely. And hopefully he steps up the way you know, Marlon Humphreys has for the team. Uh, Justin Bethel's another quarter. Of he's, he's more of a special teams guy. Uh, he's back there. And then you've got your return guy as well, Cyrus Jones. But again, you're getting to, and I say this with due respect, I hate to say the bottom of the barrel, but those are the last two corners that will come into a game if you've got a lot of injuries. And just going through some of the other free agent additions we mentioned, you know, Ingram, uh, McPhee is back. Seth Roberts is a guy that played with Oakland, wide receiver. I'm mean, maybe a little surprised he made the team, but he's a guy that's got some speed. Uh, he did make it as one of the wide receivers. Uh, he would be maybe an outlier with them trying to get younger uh, in general with the new players. That's true. I, I think there's two reasons why Seth Roberts made the team. Number one, he's versatile. He can play in the slot, he can play outside the numbers. Number two, he really supports the running game. He's, he's a really good blocker, and we, and we know that in this offense, that's going to be critical to the Ravens. You know, sure. it, it could be the difference between a four-yard game and a 40-yard game if you have a good blocker on the outside of the wide receiver. Yeah. Very fair. Um, we mentioned Earl Thomas. Nick Boyle comes back. 
a part of the trio of tight ends that yeah, they have. Trio that is. Yeah, and then, you know, Mark Andrews and Hayden Hurst and Nick Boyle, and Boyle is probably the best blocker of the three of them. RG3, as we mentioned, is back. I'm just going to go through the list real quick. The key starters lost, and I'll give my quick opinion as to whether it's a big deal or not, and then you can fill in. You know, John Brown, when they used him last year, a deep threat, he started out really hot. They got away from going to him because the offense changed completely, but, uh, you know, I was a little disappointed to see him go because we needed that deep speed, but they ended up drafting some guys in his place, so maybe not as tough a loss. Uh, Michael Crabtree, not as big a deal. You know, he's towards the end anyway. You know, Joe Flacco, we all know about that story. C.J. Mosley, I was not willing to pay what the Jets were. Uh, you know, I've said this before. Hey, solid player, had big shoes to fill for Ray, but I didn't see enough impact plays. I thought at times he got caught up and didn't shed blocks very well. We know he wasn't good at pass coverage. I was okay with that. Uh, Zadarius Smith, you know, you need that pass rush. We'll find out this year if uh, letting him go was the way to go. The rebate paid him. Terrell Suggs, you know, towards the end, so it's sad, but he was about done anyway. Uh, maybe one more year. Brent Urban, yeah, he was good depth. I hated to lose him. Uh, Eric Weddle, we talked about him. I'm, I'm okay with him going. And Max Williams was always hurt, so you, your thoughts? Well, I don't think any of those guys were, were critical losses. You know, you, you wonder, you know, you always hear this, uh, this cliche, Mike, next man up. And it's really true in football, but it usually is applied for injuries. But at the same time, if the Ravens are going to commit to this youth movement, you have to let those guys that you trusted enough in to make draft picks or invest in his undrafted free agents, that you got, you got to give him an opportunity to play and fill those roles when these guys leave. And, and I'm agree, I agree with you. Those deals that Mosley and Gary Smith got were just astronomical deals. Maybe that's the way things are going to go from this point forward in the NFL. I don't know. Well, it's, it's like, a premium to get a pass rush for sure. Right, but in the NFL, the Ravens have lived by the credo, right player, right price. And those guys were the right players for the Ravens that were the wrong price. Well, and you know why they've been able to do that is because they've drafted well and they evaluate talent. And right. you, know, you talk about the undrafted free agents that they're able to sign that make the team but also provide depth of the preseason. That speaks volumes about how good the organization is. Yeah, and I think on the outside when they let go of a guy like Michael Crabtree and John Brown, they let go. You know, these guys are, are, are players that obviously didn't work out all that well with the Ravens, and they, they decided to go get some young guys. Now, Miles Boykin, he made a nice play yesterday on that adjustment, but, the, you know, the, the, you look at these receivers, you know, I look at them all the time, off the camp, Jaleel Scott, mm -hmm. the improvement he made from a rookie who was IR to this, this year at camp was dramatic. And so he's, he was inactive yesterday. Another speedster. Yeah. New Mexico State. But he's, he's rangy and lengthy and just has really good hands. And I didn't see any of that last year. So the we always want to write off what we saw one year that, okay, these guys are, are bust. But they do improve. They do put in the work. And he's one of those guys that's come along. Well, and, and look, we know that the Ravens have not had a great track record in drafting wide receivers. But that doesn't mean they should stop doing it. You know, yeah. There's only so many good receivers out there from year to year on the free agent market. And then and you get down to how much you're willing to pay for the salary cap. So they've gone out, they've drafted guys who do have Eric DaCosta. Does something change with the way they draft wide receivers now as compared to Ozzy? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. But they got to keep trying. And it looks like maybe they're turning the page there a little bit with that. We'll ultimately find out. Well, as an organization, they self-scout all the time. You know, when we missed on Mark Clay, you know, Mark Clay was a decent player, wasn't he? He, 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 wasn't. he was down for the Ravens Beach last year. Good guy. Yeah. yeah. And, well, obviously, Rashard Perryman was a miss. Right. So what did they do? They're, they're looking, this is them speaking. What did we do that was wrong? What did we overlook? What did we put too much value in and maybe we should put a little less value in it and maybe some other things we should increase in terms of a quality that a player has that might make him either less or more attractive. So I, I think it's a learning curve and maybe they're at a place now where they've gotten better. I, I know that the Ravens, uh, Eric DeCosta has a really good relationship with the GM from the Jacksonville Jaguars. And they jumped up in front of the Jaguars to take Miles Boykin. And there was some text exchange stuff between the two <laughs> that, you know, kind of like, you know, as bodies would do. And, and they were just, they wanted to get Miles Boykin. So Boykin's a guy that really has shown a lot of polish. And are we ready to go for, to a break? We are. And we're back for one more, correct? All right, we are. All right, so we've got beer to get to. We'll take a quick time now and we'll come back. It's the original Green Turtles Radio Fresh. 
Let's sit down to my favorite bar. I've been rocking for 21 years so far. The Green Turtle gonna have some. Welcome to the original Green Turtle in Ocean City, a neighborhood favorite with a mouth watering menu, the best bar in town, a huge game room, plus the apparel and gift shop. There's nothing like the original. The original Green Turtle in Ocean City. Let's sit down to the Turtle again tonight. 